In today's video, I have a pit boss and I'm doing a burn off on the new Pro Series 1600. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue Wisconsin and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now this burn off went pretty dang smooth, so grab a bag of pellets and your stopwatch, Gary. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Now before I actually start the burn off process, I wanna point out one new feature that I'm incredibly excited about. Go ahead and spin it around. I just love these casters. I mean, look at how smooth it works. It's gotta be those Andre the Giant big poly wheels. On the back side of the hopper, Pit Boss added this awesome little pellet dump, quick release. Go ahead, pull over the latch, drop this down, pull this little knob up, and it drops just like that. Now after all your pellets are out, go ahead, pull that one up, pull over the lever, and the hoppers close back up and you can go ahead and put in some new pellets or put it away for the winter. What? No. And you're gonna wanna use that pellet dump in case you live in a high moisture area. That way none of those pellets are absorbing any extra moisture. We'll grab it by the handle and spin it around again. And over on the hopper side, these casters have locks, so we'll just lock them in also. Now my favorite upgrade to this Pro Series 1600 is the actual ash dump. Pick up the shelf and get that up so I can show you on the bottom. If you're like me and you didn't remove that warning label on the bottom of the fire pot during the assembly, you better do it now. You wanna make sure you get that off. So you're just gonna take this little clip off, slide this over, and this is gonna bring that right out. Remove the craft paper and put the fire pot right back in how you took it off. And you're gonna make it a habit that after every single cook, you're gonna pull off your fire pot and clean out all the ash inside it. This is a huge time saver because you don't have to go ahead and pull all your grates out anymore. And then you just get her in and slide it over and put on your clamp. Open up the lid and take out all the grates and the flame broil. You have to get all of that out and expose that fire pot. I'm not seasoning the cast iron griddle today. I'll do that on a different video for you. Take out our top and middle shelf for now. Get out the diamond cooking grids. Open up the catch on the sear plate handle. Get that out of the way. Then just go ahead and take off your handle. After every real long, low and slow cook, I plan to take off that flame broil. I wanna make sure at the bottom of that chamber, it's not filling up with any excess grease or grime. Now just take out the flame broil, and there's a little bit of wiggling that needs to happen to get it out, but you can get it. Be very careful when you pull this out because that sear plate isn't attached. It can fall off. Turn baby Huey on and double check to make sure that this hopper is working correctly. And that's pretty simple, just press the power button. Obviously we can hear that the fan is running and that's a good sign, but we also wanna double check and make sure that the auger is spinning. I don't think my camera is gonna focus and show you, but you can see that that igniter is going hot. I verified that baby Huey is working. Now I'm just gonna power them off for a bit. Press the power button. The next step is to check and make sure that there's nothing obstructing that hopper and that auger. Looks pretty clear and empty to me. Now the 1600 has a 32 pound hopper and I'm just using some hickory blend for this burn off today. Just start dumping them straight right in the hopper. Another upgrade is that the window on the hopper is a lot bigger. You can see if they're starting to dam up a lot easier without actually opening up the lid. After you load your hopper, turn the power button back on again. Time to prime the auger and get those pellets all the way to the fire pot. It's a nice little feature and all you do is just hit the prime button. You're gonna hold that down and that actually just speeds up the auger. You're gonna have to hold it for a little bit. Now obviously this is gonna take a little bit, but I have my camera set up so we can actually see the planks and punks. All right, here they come. After you get a good handful of pellets in the fire pot, start putting all the components back in the chamber. And you can see we're starting to get a little smoke coming out of there. Get the flame broil back in, hook up your handle. Go ahead and screw that knob back on. It's long-winded for sure. Hook the handle back onto the latch. Man, oh mighty, I call that a fire. And I might as well close up the sear plate for now. And just be careful that you don't touch that flame broiler because it's starting to get hot. We'll put in the middle and the top shelf. We'll simply go in like that. And finally your top shelf. Now I'm gonna close up the lid and set a timer for 30 minutes. But before we do that, let's get this sticker off. 
That came off slick. And it's only 18 degrees out tonight, but I like that sticking adhesive. The preset cooking temp on the Pit Boss 1600 is set at 350 degrees. You want to make sure that you're letting this chamber heat up and get to temp. But you can set it at whatever temperature you're planning to run at. But seeing that we're doing the burn off and the preset is 350, we're going to start it right there. What do I say? What did I say if we saw a look? My 30 minute timer went off and I added another 15 minute timer. So we're at 45 minutes right now on this burn off. Now I added my thermal work signals and it's telling me that it's at 346 degrees on the bottom grate in the center, right above the fire pot. And the Pro Series 1600 is saying 330 degrees. Now I have seen a few people mention on different Facebook groups that there is a firmware update coming on this controller. When that is, or if it's true, I'm not sure. I did check and there's not a 275 degree temperature setting on this controller. So if they're adding that 10 degree increments, at least you'll be able to cook at 270 or 280. 275 degrees, it's my preferred temp. So I'm hoping we can see it. Now we're gonna go ahead and check out the inside, but I wanted to show you this real quick. We are cooking at 253 degrees and 237 on the Pit Boss. So in my opinion, this controller is giving us an overall cooking temperature throughout that chamber. Who knows? Now it's time to season up this 1600, so grab a can of canola oil or vegetable oil and spray down that inside chamber. We'll start on the right hand side first and just start spraying it down. Get those hinges to it, ain't gonna hurt it none. Get way in the back. Make sure you get that flame broiler coated up nice. Just makes it easier to clean up. And you can see she's starting to fog up a little bit. That means it's starting to burn off all them impurities, but let's spray her down. Get way in the back. And now I'm going to close up the lid and I'm going to turn the pit boss up to 450 degrees. And I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and I'm going to check to see if I'm starting to get that good patina color inside that chamber. So this is a good time to give you a quick little walk around review about the Pro Series 1600. I really like this big sturdy handle on the hopper. It makes it easy to push it around. I love the glass feature. The controller is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth PID controller. And what do I mean by a PID controller? Well, it's basically like your cruise control in your car. And it also means proportional integral derivative. Yes, I said it correctly. Well, at least I think I did. Now, Pit Boss sends you two probes, but you got one, two, three, four ports, and that's great. You just gotta pick up a couple more probes, and if you're like me, a lot of times you're cooking on the weekend for the whole week, so you need those couple extra probes. Ah! Now, I showed you this on the assembly, but I love how these racks hold just like that. Inside the chamber, we got a light. I love that feature because when you're cooking at night and you aren't making a video, it certainly is handy because you don't have to carry a flashlight outside. We also have a double walled upper chamber and it's got insulation in between it. And the lid has a nice little gasket all the way around it. And that really does help seal up the chamber so just your smoke goes out the stack. It's pretty nice and I haven't seen a lot of smoke escaping off the side of the lids. And if you got an older one, you know what I'm talking about. It's got plenty of storage on the bottom shelf. I like the front and the rear casters. These turn well and they got that lock so you can lock this cooker right in place. And that's really nice because it helps keep that cooker stable when you're going in there and flipping over a brisket. It's got three tool hooks and that's certainly handy when you're cooking up hamburgers and brats. The side shelf is nice and sturdy. That's great because you don't want to put your cutting board on there and always worry that it's going to tip off. Now again, one of my favorite upgrades to the Pro Series is that ash clean out that's gonna make life for me and my boys a lot easier. If you're familiar with Pit Boss, you know the flame broiler, and that's a pretty cool feature. But what I really like is that the handle for opening it up is right here next to the controller now. And a cool little feature they added is the rack hanger. Now I don't use all the shelves all the time, obviously. So it's really nice just to have a place to hook them on. I mean, you gotta leave space for your dead broke barbecue sign in your garage. You can't just have racks hanging from all the walls. It's got a nice probe porthole and it's big enough to get my signals ambient temperature through it. And that's actually a pretty big deal to me because I've had other pellet grills where I can't get my ambient temperature probe through the hole and I have to stick it underneath the door. And I don't wanna have to do that. I wanna keep that door tight, right? 
So my opinion so far on the Pit Boss 1600 is very positive. I love all the new features and some of the creature comforts that this thing is offering. It has taken a little bit longer to get it up to temperature, but it's also only 15 degrees out today and that's a big chamber. But this is the first time I've started it up and we've got a lot more experimenting to do with it. I think I'm gonna do two briskets and maybe some ribs for my first cook using it. Yeah, I know. I always tell you to do chicken on your first cook and you should, but I'm not. So I ran the 1600 for around 45 minutes and my Thermoworks has been reading right around 145 degrees, 42, 45, 40, back and forth, and the Pit Boss is running right around 430, 435. So the controller's been reading on average about 20 degrees below the temperature that I set it at. Let's go ahead and open up the lid and check out our seasoning process. That's a pretty good start for the first time. Obviously, it's a little darker and burnt off over here, closer to the fire pot, but we still got a good patina over here. Now the back walls, I don't see a lot developing back there yet, but we got a lot more cooks to do. The sides are starting to get a little color to them though, that's good. Now we might as well just shut it off, but I'm gonna leave the lid open. And that's really easy, you're just gonna hold the power button down, and the 1600's gonna go into about a 15 minute shutdown. So under the circumstances, Baby Huey did a pretty dang good job. It's even colder out now, it's only 12 Oops. degrees. And if you've got any tips and tricks for the 1600, leave a comment below because as time goes on, more and more people are gonna watch this video because they like to see how it works. And it's always good to have good comments in there so people can learn and make their own decision if they wanna purchase this cooker or not. Hypothermia is settling in for sure. I'll probably wake up like one of those guys from Game of Thrones tomorrow and have blue crystal eyes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't wanna miss my next video. And for all of you from the 1970s, Play a little bit of doorbell ditch. You know, ring the bell. But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.